Hi everyone, this is Paul here from the Magdalene Centre. Today I'm doing the astrology report for the week commencing the 9th of January. Now, apparently in some of the key aspects and transits taking place during the course of the week and giving an overview of what it all means. Before I do that, I just want to clarify as I always do that the astrology doesn't control our lives, it really gives us a framework to understand what is going on around us, what's unfolding in the big picture and the kind of lessons that are there for us to be learning at this time and how we can best utilise it so that we can empower ourselves whilst avoiding creating any karma for ourselves especially with the nature of the astrology of this year but at the end of the day we all have free will so it's up to each and every one of us to take responsibility for how we utilize our free will and seek to do it in a way that is in line with the bigger picture so it goes with the natural flow of events rather than trying to force things to happen outside of natural timing now in terms of the aspects this week i'll begin with the moon as usual she starts on Wednesday in Aquarius, so this is a time where we may be taking a step back or working more with within our friendships, but it's also looking at what is our role within our communities and how can we best better enable ourselves to support our communities, so what skills can we bring that help lift the community up. On the same day, um, around the afternoon sort of time, the moon will move into Pisces. This is a time for connecting with spirit of meditating in it and seeking to develop a deeper reserve of things like psychic sensitivity compassion for one another and trying to develop an emotional connection with that unconditional love and that sense of oneness that unites everything together whilst obviously taking responsibility for ourselves on saturday the moon will move into aries so we may feel a drive to get things done to take action to make things happen and it's also time for kind of getting in touch with our own individuality and asserting our own personal sense of self. And then on around about Tuesday sort of time, the moon is then going to move into Taurus. And this is a time where you may feel that kind of need to slow down to kind of get in touch with our bodies and also maybe spend some time in nature and just getting grounded and taking things a bit slower so that the things that need to be done on a a routine basis in order to keep things growing and not overlooked and um, we make sure that we're also taking care of ourselves and making sure our the base is necessary for physical security and that without obviously trying to manipulate other people in that respect now in terms of the other aspects this week they're all concentrated um, on friday and saturday so the on friday we have the sun is going to be um, exactly conjunct pluto they will be feeling the energy of this particular aspect building up to that point and for some of us we may not feel it directly until a couple of days later depending on individual sensitivity to the energies but this particular aspect is all about and just looking at our relationship with power but it's also understanding that for us to operate with integrity or for us to build a legacy of any kind without you know, creating negative calm for ourselves or without our reputation being destroyed everything must be guided by truth so even if the truth causes initial discomfort and reveals to us areas where either we've been deceiving other people or other people have been deceiving us or trying to seek power over us or we're seeking power over them and understanding that all true power comes within us and with that particular power when we are in touch with it it comes with the added responsibility of wielding it wisely and so if we try to use this sort of deep transformative power for personal gain there will inevitably be um, significant consequences for it so Pluto demands that when we do empower ourselves we'll utilize that power for the benefit of all and not just for the self so it's an energy that pushes us beyond selfish um, self-interest and selfish desires and, and sole concern for oneself at the exclusion of others and it asks us to basically look at how do we utilize our power and how can, what is our relationship to it do we see power as wielding influence over other people or do we see power as a neutral force within us that comes from the source of our being but is not ours to own it's ours to steward and use it for the betterment of both ourselves and our um, and humanity as a whole 
because otherwise if we try to use it to bolster the south or use it to make ourselves more powerful at the expense of others then there's inevitably um, a backlash towards it and it also during its karma that more than likely really don't want to um, do, be doing that for ourselves so it's a time of being honest with ourselves about what is our relationship with power what is our what are our true motivations for doing things because thing is if we're doing something that looks noble but we have hidden motivations and it's actually doing something that's um, to manipulate or gain something from other people through appearing to look a certain way then the truth we will be outed by the truth at the end of the day so it's basically saying that if you, if you are doing if you do decide to do something and um, for to help other people make sure the motivations are honest and make sure that it's driven by a true desire to help other people and to empower them whilst making sure that clear boundaries are also set so we don't commit more than we can and we don't in cause we don't enable the other person to be dependent on us we uh, maintain clear boundaries that to make sure that we're helping the other person to grow and to take responsibility for themselves rather than relying on other people to do the hard work for them so if we want to truly empower ourselves and we want to truly connect with that deep source of power within us then the only um, choice the thing we have to do at all times is take personal responsibility for ourselves not just for what we do but also what we think what we say and it's not just in public environments it's also uh, make sure that we're doing everything that we do is honest whether people see it or not because Pluto uncovers anything that is based on illusion or deception and based on trying to control people i.e. violating free will so if we don't want to have that kind of unpleasant exposure then it's best we don't engage in that kind of activity to begin with because we are all personally responsible for how we exercise our, our own personal power and we also have a responsibility to the wider collective because we're all interconnected at the end of the day so if we don't want to quit calm for ourselves or face major opposition or major backlash then we need to make sure that we're living in alignment with truth and what we're doing is motivated by sincere desire to help other people and not just to look good in order to get brownie points if you like. The other aspects taking place this week are on Sunday so we have a square between Jupiter in Sagittarius and Neptune in Pisces so because both planets are in their home signs neither planet is stronger than the other they're both in their um, full power here so with this particular square, Sagittarius is looking at the big picture, but it's mainly focused on order. Pisces, and it tends to be a more conventional kind of understanding of truth. Pisces is about unlimited potential, it's about the infinite, and it's also about learning to surrender and to embrace chaos. So we're looking at the whole balancing between order and chaos and recognizing that both have their place. The natural everything has a natural order to it so everything at some level is orderly but whenever something's outlives its time chaos inevitably comes in to wipe the slate clean or to clear away the old it allow a new level of order and harmony to develop these two planets together is also about looking at how do we how do we treat other people? So with Jupiter connected to Neptune, it's seeking to have a kind and beneficent spirit towards all um, living beings. So it's learning to move beyond the whole win-lose ideal. If one person's successful, we're not as a problem. It's understanding that if people are succeeding in an honest, empowering way, because we're connected, we're all we all um, have success in that respect so as weird as that sounds the more we seek to become successful in an honest way and the more we learn to celebrate other people's success the easier that generosity of spirit um, becomes so it's when someone close to suddenly seems to have a key break and they seem to be hit a run of um, luck as it were but it could just be that they're doing they're taking the right course of action and they're reaping the rewards for it it's learning to celebrate that person's success as our own it's understanding that we are all interconnected and it's not this whole 
if one person's gaining someone else's losing mentality is moving into a state of or an understanding of abundance and that we're all interconnected and if one person is growing that sends ripple out the house um, that offsets any negativity around if you like so the more we encourage each other to be become the best versions of ourselves to celebrate each other's successes and work together in a spirit of truth and um, unconditional love and compassion for one another the more we can um, have that influence that pushes the collective closer to love as opposed to fear because obviously fear and love are the two key antagonistic energies or the two energies are, are the opposites of one another so it's moving out of a fear-based mentality where someone else is winning we must be losing instead looking at the bigger picture and understanding that if someone is becoming if someone we're close to is becoming more successful and be and doing it in a way that is in alignment with natural law so they're reaping benefits through staying um, honest and, and living with integrity then we also um, benefit from that likewise if we're working on ourselves to become more honest and more growth orientated and we're achieving success it's understanding that the importance of sharing that success so that when we experience that kind of joy of achieving something we don't just hold it hold it to ourselves we share it with one another just having that attitude or moving to the attitude of sharing and to recognize that the more we give of ourselves um, as long as we're not um, as long as we use discernment to make sure that no one's taking the piss as it were but if we're looking at the big picture and working together towards collective abundance then everyone wins in that respect on the same day we have mercury conjunct saturn in capricorn so this in some respects is the beginning of a new mercury saturn cycle so it's all about employing discipline within our minds so when it comes to what we're thinking and what we're saying it's reminding us that we need to have mental discipline and have control over our choice of words so and with the other aspects going on around us it's evaluating our thoughts and our words and see is it honest is it kind will it help the other person if it's not going to do that then don't bother saying it because it's just knock someone else out of um, their stride and everyone else loses results so it's this is a time to work on having that desire for mental um, discipline of understanding that if we bring control over our rational minds control over our thoughts we can more able or we can better able achieve our goals because it's through mental discipline and avoiding being distracted by insignificant issues that we can channel or focus our energy on the things that matter and rise above any petty concerns in that respect so it's having that willpower self-discipline self-control over our thoughts that enable us to achieve the long-term goals that we set for ourselves so that we don't allow distractions to stop us from growing we don't allow inconsequential thoughts to knock us off stride we have we see that control over the left brain functions like logic and communication so that we don't think or say something that's going to have an adverse impact on the same day we're going to have a, a grand cardinal cross forming which will go on to the eighth up until the 18th of january so this involves uranus in aries the north node in cancer palace athena in libra and sun conjunct the south nodes in capricorn so in some respects this is like a crossroads with uranus in aries um highlights the need for honoring individuality whilst palace athena opposite reminds us that we need to also look at the fact that everything operates at a certain degree of harmony so we can't just go around asserting ourselves at the expense of wider harmony we need to make sure that we're working in tandem with natural laws and that we're seeking to do things in a way that recognizes that everything's interconnected so a poorly chosen course of action will inevitably be calm for ourselves so it's important that we take a wise we assert ourselves 
based on a thorough understanding of who we are and the wisdom to know which course of action will empower us and which you know, causes problems. And it's also, with Palace Athena, it's about that wisdom of balance and to of seeking harmony in things and bringing balance to the yin and yang within us so we don't create an internal disharmony which then ripples out to the to the wider world because whatever's on the inside will be mirrored back to us from the outside as, as the whole as within so without and two opposite one another means that one thing we need to be mindful of is where we struggle with creativity because our thinking becomes erratic or the nervous system becomes overcharged as it were so it's making sure that we also engage in some kind of grounding to avoid burning out or um, have be overcharged with um, nervous energy as it were and with the square to the squares to the nodal axis this also points to the need to with north node in cancer telling showing us that we need to be getting in touch with the roots of our being and only doing things which are right for us rather than what doing something to try and gain social status or social approval and the south nodes in capricorn mind is that it's um it's also the gifts of this south node is a strong work ethic if you like or a need to achieve things but it needs to be controlled and it needs to be something that honors who we are but also does not is not done at the expense of other people so it's pursuing goals that are right for who we are and allow us to stay in touch with the core of who we are but it's making sure also that we don't do something that fundamentally goes against our own nature and making sure that we incorporate the higher level of understanding that Uranus is trying to awaken us to. So achieving deeper levels of understanding of who we are at the core level and making sure that whatever goals we set for ourselves empower, allows us to express ourselves fully, allows us to be our authentic selves and whatever we do is driven by desire for personal integrity. So overall this is a week where it's being honest with ourselves and reflecting on our relationship with power. It's about seeing are we able to be generous and um, encouraging when people when other people are successful and are we able to sh express kindness or patience with people when we may prefer to them to just go away and leave us alone at this point. It's can we be still maintain that kindness and compassion towards other people and this doesn't mean that we master ourselves, it doesn't mean that we become a self-appointed martyr, we just become a doormat, but it's making sure that we're not, we be as kind as possible, we also set boundaries and we make it clear that there are certain, there are certain things that we won't um, put up with and we're not prepared to be walked over, but we will offer um, love and kindness, we will offer understanding towards each other, um, but it also must be doing something that's honest and loving so tr as always truth and love need to be the two guiding principles um, throughout the week so love for oneself so that we don't end up wallowing in our shadow you know, side or criticizing ourselves to the point where we end up operating at a lower level and it's also love for other people so we don't don't see any of any means of manipulating the people using them we understand that with in terms of love you can't you can't be loving and controlling at the same time you have to allow the other person to be themselves but also you need to make sure that any dynamic in relationships whether they be with a partner or with friends or in business that with who we are is also honored and respected and we're the if we're not being respected or not being allowed to be ourselves then obviously something needs to be addressed in the dynamic in order to change things but it's all down to personal choice at the end of the day and it's all down to our will depends on our willingness to embrace responsibility and um, commit to the things we say we're going to do and not just say one thing and do another so it's having that mental discipline to only say what we mean and mean what we say and if we say we're going to do something we have the honesty and integrity to commit to it and take the course of action that we say we're going to do so that we don't create calm for ourselves through lying to people.
So I hope this useful guide for the week. There's a lot of opportunities for us to transform ourselves and to um, transform our minds through greater discipline, you know, greater compassion for ourselves and others, and greater commitment to truth and spiritual principles and seeking to live them out in our lives. The more we do this, the more empowered we become and the more we move into the natural alignment that allows us to be successful in an honest way so we don't create karma for ourselves during the course of the year. So take care. You may be blessed this week.